In this unit we're going to take a look at symbols in Revit. So first of all I'm going to show you where to find the symbols command. So if you go to the annotate menu and towards the end there there's a panel there for symbol. Now there's lots of different types of specialized symbols but the one I'm going to talk about in this unit is just the general symbol command. So I'm going to go ahead and click on there and I'm just going to place a north point, north arrow and we're going to use this as a demonstration for this unit to talk about symbols. You will naturally find lots of your own uses for symbols, but we'll just stick with a north arrow to, say, explain the concept. So the main properties of a, a symbol in Revit is that it's a, a graphic. It can contain text, as you see there, but it stays the same size regardless of the view scale in which it's used. So this symbol here, for example, has actually been drawn or modelled, if you like, in the, the family editor at a 30 mil diameter. So when you print your page out, your, your view, this will always be 30 mil high, regardless of what view scale you set your view to. So anywhere where you need a stamp or a graphic or a note on your view or directly onto your sheet and you need it to be a consistent size when it's printed out, then a symbol is the way to go. Also, being a sort of stamp, you can um, duplicate this as many times either on the same sheet, uh, on different sheets, on the same view, so you're not sort of uh, confined to using it once. You can just stamp it all over your, your views as required. Now I've just said that symbols are independent of the view scale in which they're used. Let's just demonstrate that now. So if I just go ahead and select the symbol, I'm just going to hit the Edit Family button, which immediately opens up the Family Editor in Revit. This is the, uh, the area of Revit where you create families. So again, you can go and create your own uh, symbol families from scratch but we're now in editing mode in the family editor for this north point. So if I just use the ruler tool, the measurement tool, select there, you might just be able to make out just next to the end 30, 30 mil. So just to show you that that is 30 mil high. Let's just come back out of the family editor and go back into the project. So I don't want to make any changes to that. So there is our 30 mil when printed high north arrow so let's put that view onto a sheet now if i again use the measuring tool on the sheet so if you like for autocad users i'm, I'm in sort of paper space now so again you can make out there it's 30 mil high so that's what it's going to print out at now if I go back into the view itself, let's change this to 1 to 500. So let's, let's say this is a, a site plan. It looks like the symbol's got a lot bigger. It hasn't. It's actually the model elements that have shrunk down, so they're 1 to 500. Go back to our sheet view. There is our view on the, the sheet. And again, just to confirm, Cancel out of that. The symbol is still 30 mil high. So as I said at the start of this unit, I'm just using a north point as an example of a symbol, but you can envisage many different scenarios where you need a graphic, maybe with text, that needs to stay at a consistent size when it's printed out, and you do not need it to scale up and down with the, the view itself. So far I've just placed my symbol onto a view, but there's nothing stopping us using them directly onto sheets. So if I go to my sheet view here, there is our view which contains the symbol. But if I go to annotate and symbol and just place it directly onto a sheet, again you can see that it can keeps that consistent 30 mil high. So However this has been drawn or modelled in the family editor, it will stay at that size on the sheet regardless of whether it's come onto the sheet via being placed inside a view 
or being placed directly onto the sheet. Um, it's totally up to you. With north points, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Obviously, if you've got a, a couple of sort of site plans on this sheet, um, you may want to put the north point in the view so that when you move the site plan around, it goes with it. Um, or you may just want to, to put your north arrow up sort of somewhere in the title block in the notes. Totally up to you. Either way, it's going to stay the same size regardless. If I just hit the symbol command again and we look in the type selector, we can see that we've got a very limited choice of symbols to use in this project. That's because this is just based on the standard default Autodesk template, which just comes with these two symbols preloaded. If you need to load additional symbols into your project, once you've selected the symbol tool, you get the option here to load family. So I'll just do that again. So cancel out of all commands. So hit symbol. You can either choose from the symbols that are currently loaded into this project based on the template you used, or you can choose to load family. Now, this is the standard metric library that comes with Revit. So you can either navigate in here, or if you've loaded any additional symbols off the internet, or you've created your own and put them in your own user library, obviously you need to navigate to, to that folder structure. But I'm just going to open the annotations folder here. I'm going to open architectural. Now your symbols families will have a .rfa for Revit family file extension. And there's a couple of other North Arrow examples that Autodesk have supplied. So let's just work with that one. Hit open. It gets loaded into your project. It becomes the current type to use. And just click anywhere in your view to place the symbol and hit modify to cancel out of the command. At some point you're probably going to want to create your own symbols. Two ways of doing this. One, find a symbol that's close to what you're after and then adapt it. So let's say you want to create a new north point. You might want to start with say this one um, as a start of a 10. Select it. Once you've selected it you have the option to edit family hit that. That takes you into the family editor environment. Now content creation i.e. creating your own families is quite a complex subject. Um, it's above the scope of the beginners course but I'm just showing you the principle here. You would go into the family editor and here on your ribbon you have all the tools you need to create and edit your content. So you would adapt this symbol, this family, and then do a file and save as, give it a new name, store that in your own user library, and then you would load that back into your project for use. You may want to load that into your office template so it's available for everyone to use on new projects. So I'm just going to come back out of there. Don't want to save any changes. That takes us back into the project environment. Or you might want to start completely from scratch the file new and it's a new family. Now the trick here is just to make sure you select the correct family template on which to start your new family. So go to annotations and metric generic annotation. Hit open. Again this now takes you back into the family editor environment ready to start creating your own custom families and that's where you would use the tools up here to create your symbol, do a file, save as, give it a name, .rfa file extension, load it into your project, possibly load it into your template, and then quit out of the family editor. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com.
bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.